Thank you so much. Grazie. <laughs> My new dessert, the ice cream gnocchi. For you, Giorgio. Consider it the Helpful Monkey Award. My thank you for a job well done. This plate of ice cream was George's first trophy. A trophy is a reward for doing something well. just mean to melt a guy's helpful monkey award. Giorgio, what did you do? Leave your ice cream gnocchi in the sun? <laughs> well, maybe I can still use it for something. Don't leave it in the sun where it'll melt. Now there was no sun to melt it. All George had to do was wait for the man with the yellow hat to come home. A lobby leaf. Luckily, George had time to clean it off so it would be perfect when the man with the yellow hat saw it. Luckily for Curious Hunley, George wanted to show off his trophy. <laughs> it didn't make sense. There was no sun. He didn't drop it. You ran water on it. Oh, that's gonna make it melt too. Yeah, right. But this is the last one. No sun, no dropping, and no washing it. Hey, how much ice cream can one monkey eat alone? I think he's gonna share this time. Cream, George. We are. Oh, it's a party. Be a good neighbor, monkey. Share. You've already had so much. Let's get him. <laughs> we got him. He's, he's right there. Trophies? <laughs> you got that as a trophy? <laughs> well, let me get a picture. <laughs> George was in the country, where things were much, much cooler. <laughs> oh, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> you call that a cannonball? I'll show you a cannonball! George loved the country. It had lots of great stuff the city didn't have. You could hear frogs croaking. You could feel the breeze from a hummingbird's wings when it spun around the flowers. At night, you could see a sky full of stars. What you doing, George? Stargazing? No one knows exactly how many stars there are. 
Not even scientists. Huh? That's when George thought, maybe it's time somebody found out. The most important rule in star counting was keeping track. George marked each star down on his pad. The two most important rules in star counting were knowing the difference between stars and lightning bugs and keeping track. Third rule, the other two rules don't matter if you don't stay awake. Because when you come back the next night, you can't tell which stars were counted or uncounted. The only solution, counting them all fast before you fall asleep. One, two, three, four, five. 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 There had to be a way to count stars and go to sleep, too. He just had to figure it out. the big upside-down cap. It could be a placekeeper. He could count the stars below it until he had them all, then move to the other sides. He had a system. Well, big hot city, here we come. <laughs> uh, we can't turn it on, George. Don't want to knock out all the power. George was too hot to sleep. The one time he could have stayed awake, and there weren't any stars to count. <laughs> There was only one thing for a monkey to do at a time like this. Hide. George? George? Uh, the power's out. <sighs> George? You up here? Uh-huh. Hi, compass. George tried to tell the man with the yellow hat how sorry he was for wrecking the city's electricity. Oh, you think the blackout is your fault? <laughs> oh, George. It takes more than one little monkey to cause a blackout. I hope. This seemed like even more stars than they had in the country. That's not the only good thing. These will melt with the freezer turned off. So I guess we just have to eat them. <laughs> you found the Big Dipper. George settled in for a good, long, relaxing star count. <sighs> oh, thank you, George. What are you looking at, spider webs? <laughs> well, spiders spin those webs with special spider silk. They live there. Uh huh, and the webs catch their food. Oh, hold it. Spiders don't eat apples, they eat small insects and flies. George didn't want to eat flies, but he liked spiderwebs so much Ooh. that he wondered why he couldn't make a monkey web which would catch monkey food.
passed the dachshund test, but it did the opposite of catching fruit. Twine was strong, not rubbery, and it was all he had left. But would food stick to it? <laughs> it would if you made it sticky. It's stickier than honey. This would be the perfect test for his monkey web. Nice web, George. Playing spider? Uh -huh. yeah. All right, spider monkey. Here comes a big fly. Uh -huh. Food didn't stick to the web. And the web couldn't stick to the wall because George was too heavy. Aww. You get those to the park. <laughs> wow, you even brought plenty of extra strong tape so it won't blow away. Thanks. You really saved the day. You want that? <laughs> sure, I have plenty. <laughs> Maybe George didn't have to give up on his monkey web yet. Here was a chance to see how an expert did it. George, let's get home before we get caught in the rain. Oh, hey, what's this? <laughs> well, that is a pretty good monkey web, George. <laughs> it... This is my grandfather's collection of antique postcards. They're priceless. <laughs> we'll never get them all. <laughs> oh my, what luck that this big sticky web thing was here. Oh, that wasn't luck. That was a monkey. <laughs> oh, rain. I've got to recover that statue now. Ugh, and I'd better get these to the museum fast. Thanks again. Bye -bye. <gasps> <gasps> the spider webs had to be saved from the storm, too. webs was hard. George was impressed little spiders could do such amazing things. George got rid of the rainy day and gave him a sunny mountain view. Fever, stuffy nose, clammy paws. You're definitely fighting a germ, George. Here you go. See that blob? That's a germ. Oh. Some germs are good for you, but bad germs can make you sick. <laughs> well, that's your body. Your nose, mouth, stomach. <laughs> Those are your lungs. Oh. When you sneeze yes. or cough, <laughs> that's your lungs squeezing together and trying to force out the bad germs. Enough biology. Time for you to rest. George saw a face. A face he had seen before. In the mirror. It was him. George's mouth was amazing. It was like a giant cave. Yeah? A cave with an echo. A squishy floor, which was actually his tongue. Huh? And 
best of all, yeah? a spaceship. Ooh. Yeah. George was amazed. He didn't know Gnocchi could drive. George knew they were somewhere above his mouth, but where? Fortunately, Gnocchi had discovered a helpful sign. They were in George's nose. You won't be smelling that smelly cheese. Down to your belly. Down, down. Mosey, I'm down to your belly. Look out, he's in your belly. So don't eat a thing, that's my suggestion. Cause I'll be giving you an ingestion. <laughs> That was the germ that was making George sick. Well, hey, you're a strange looking germ. Toots is my name. These here singers are the Germets. George explained that he was the owner of this body and Toots and the Germets would have to go. Go? Why should we go? We like it here. <laughs> I'm making you feel sick? Oh, well, in that case, I'll be on my way. I I'll just uh, get, get my stuff. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Fool you! I'm never leaving! George knew he wouldn't feel better until he got rid of Toots. <laughs> but where did he go? <laughs> the lungs? <laughs> it looked kind of wet. Was this the lungs or was it the stomach? Maybe they made a wrong turn somewhere. Mosey, I'm down to your belly. Look out, he's in your belly. So don't eat a thing that's my suggestion, cause I'll be giving... <gasps> <laughs> so where should we go next? Uh, the throat? Hey, maybe the ears. You're awake. How do you feel? George felt great. He could even smell again. <laughs> you seem much better. <coughs> I wish I could say the same. <laughs> oh, thank you, George. That song was very familiar. Where was it coming from? out of snow, although the correct term is igloo. Suddenly, that was exactly what George wanted to do. Build an igloo and sleep in it, just like Bill. <laughs> you want to help me? <laughs> and sleep in the igloo, too? <laughs> George, 
That's not the proper technique. Guess I better show you. <sighs> See, the first thing you do is mark a circle in the snow. That's your foundation. Then you take the biggest blocks and fit them together like this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and when we're all done, we can just smooth out the inside. As they built it up, the igloo started to look like a volleyball cut in half. You have to cram it in so it'll hold the walls in place. <laughs> now, I'll just make a few air holes. And once we fill all these cracks of snow, it'll stay pretty warm. Oh. The inside of the igloo was smaller than George thought. <laughs> you want to build your own igloo? Sure, I wish I could help you, but I gotta fill up these cracks and then do my chores. <laughs> and taller. And brought in some furniture. Wow, good window. <laughs> Are you sure you want to spend the night in here, George? <laughs> Okie doke. I guess it's time to make the cocoa. Okay. Wow. The only thing is, it might get cold at night. The bigger the igloo, the colder it gets. <laughs> George wasn't worried. He figured he'd just wear his coat to bed. Remember, if you get cold, you can always come inside. <laughs> All right, then. Be a good little monkey. <laughs> Two hours later, he woke up freezing. <laughs> it was a little cold to be doing this, and it was too big a job. <laughs> and maybe he still could could build his igloo right inside the house. A smaller igloo. George figured he'd better turn down the thermostat so his igloo wouldn't melt. Oh, it's freezing. Oh, I must have turned the heat down too low. Wow, the heat is off. No wonder it's so cold. Oh. We did it, George! Uh-oh. George? Oh, hi, Bill. Are you sitting down? Um, no. Okay, I don't want to alarm you, but George is not in his igloo. Don't worry, he's probably upstairs and... Oh. What? Oh, boy. George! Uh, George, why is there a melted igloo in the living room? Uh-huh, you were cold outside, so you thought you'd build an igloo Inside. Uh -huh. huh. Makes sense. For a city kid. <laughs> As the Sprout Master of Sprout Troop number 674, I am proud to present Bill with his badge in winter camping. <laughs> wow. There. And now, George and I would like to invite you all to a little celebration. <laughs> George's igloo might be too cold for sleeping, but it was just right for a party. Hey, George. Got any ice for the punch? <laughs> wow, thanks. And that was the start of the Monkey Igloo Social Club. <laughs> Open every weekend until it melted in the spring.
he doing here? Look at that, George. He's so lonely. We have to save him. <laughs> oh, you're right. We should move him to the big lake so he can be with his family. Yeah. Honey, Sally just cracked a tooth and I have to take her to the vet. You want to come? Sorry, I'm in the middle of rescuing a fish. Oh, uh, well, I don't think Sally can wait. All right. Well, I'll come back as soon as I can. <laughs> Looks simple enough. Good. Fill your bucket, and you can start over there. Where's... where's my bucket? Ooh, ooh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> if only there wasn't so much dirt, the fish could swim to the big lake all by himself. Done. Excellent. Hand me the shovel and I'll dig out this and. <laughs> oh, it wouldn't be long now. As soon as the path was finished, the fish could swim back home. He did it. No more fish could get swept through. Oh. If George was willing to sit there for the rest of his life. George needed something to stop that water fast. watertight gates on each end. This is the big lake, and this is the small pond. You pull up the gate on one end, and the water in the middle goes to that level. Huh. At least one gate is always closed, so the water in the middle stays where you want it. <gasps> no matter how exciting he made it look, the fish wouldn't go. Maybe fish like cheese sandwiches as much as little monkeys. <laughs> oh, well, you uh, already ate your lunch, huh? No, I... I... Uh, when did I eat my lunch? Yeah. Say, did you, uh, take the paddles? Huh. I always leave them on the seat. I... I don't know. Listen, something very peculiar is going on around here. You're telling me. Believe me, I am normally a very organized and unforgetful <laughs> man. I... <laughs> oh, I should have known. Looks like I'm the forgetful one. I forgot how much mischief a monkey can make. <laughs> well, what have we here? It looks like a fish canal. You are some smart monkey. Ah. <laughs> I'm back! And we saved Sally's tooth! Did you save the fish? Uh -huh. George had saved five fish. Wow, that's great, George. Wait, the lonely fish is still there. Ah. <laughs> I think we 
we should just chase him. Nice job, everyone. Well, we've accomplished quite a bit today. A fish rescue and a dock repair. Only one thing left to do. Go swimming! Last one in is a rock fishing! <laughs> <laughs> Hello, baseball fans. Looks to be an exciting contest of bears versus babies. It says our scorekeeper has a boo-boo and can't make it. George could be scorekeeper. <laughs> you think you can do it, kid? You have to hang a new number each time a team scores a run. <laughs> then what are you waiting for? Go keep score! <laughs> <laughs> Will Marco be able to score from first base? Slide. Time to put up a number. Ah, folks, uh, I gotta clean my glasses because I did not see five runs being scored. Hey, George, that's the wrong number. <laughs> Lower, kid. Huh? <laughs> I'll show you. You start with one, then comes two, then three. Oh! <laughs> then four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. That's the right order. Oh! <laughs> I know. Whenever I can't remember something, I make it a song. Because songs have a way of staying with you. But what's a good song? How about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Then you sing it again. Oh. <laughs> you try it. George. Here's the pitch. Looks yeah. like it could get out of here. It's going, going. <laughs> A fantastic oh. grab by the outfielder. That was the third out. Now the Tiger Babies Almost. are up. My mom's on the phone and I have to talk to her. I wish there was someone who could help you, but there isn't. <laughs> really? You can help? <laughs> awesome. But, but first I have to see if you're qualified. Ah. It fits! You got the job. Good news, people! This very nice monkey is taking my place. <laughs> After seven comes eight. Then nine. Then ten. This was going to be easy. George had no idea what number came after that. Um, uh, hmm. Excuse me, I'm number 16. I should get my drink before 17 gets his pretzel. Huh. Hold on, you can't serve 16 before you serve 14. Do you know your numbers? Uh, oh. <laughs> 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 cool. So what comes after 10? Well, I'll show you. It's easy. Just cover the first part of the number with your hand and look at the second part. See? 1, 2. So 11, then 12. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> awesome! Do you want me to take over? <laughs> hey, kid, where you been? Um... Oh, never mind that. It's clutch time. It's the last inning, bottom of the ninth. The score is tied four to four. There are two outs, and Marco's up to bat. But he hurt his foot playing shortstop, and now he can't run. Can you run the bases for him? Huh? So if I hit the ball, will you run for me? <laughs> Come on, Paul. Keep going. Keep. Home run, Marco. Home run. I did it. I hit a home run. Oh. Oops. Run, George. Run. <laughs> if bases were like everything else, then George should run them in order. First base first. Second base second. <laughs> Base third. Bring it home, kid! Bring it home! Slide, George! Slide! <laughs> Save! What a hit! What a slide! The Bears have won the game! I, I did it! I hit a home run! Ah! And I couldn't have done it without you, George! We're so proud! That was a fine hit, Marco, and a fine run, kid! Kid? There he is! How did bears do it? George had to find out. Just Teddy? Uh -huh. A bear. Uh -huh. How do bears sleep? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Do bears sleep in the woods? Uh -huh. Hibernation! Uh -huh. Well, to hibernate, first bears eat a lot. Uh -huh. Then go into their dark, quiet caves and they. <laughs> now his room was exactly like a cave. <laughs> Except caves were quiet. George didn't know whose dog this was, but he knew what stopped Charky from barking. Peanut butter. Well, no more peanut butter. How could he quiet the cows? He couldn't hold the blanket on his ears in his sleep, but maybe there was another way to use it to keep sounds out. George, I've got that tough part down. Ooh, cool muted sound. Finally, everything was perfect for monkey hibernation. When George woke up, it would be springtime. When George woke up, he realized he'd done it. He had hibernated. Six months must have passed. His goldfish looked bigger. 
That meant outside, it was spring. <laughs> Nothing was growing yet. It must have been early spring. Good morning, George. Well, that wasn't much of a welcome back after a whole hibernation. Well, I was thinking of making banana nut pancakes for breakfast, but you ate all the bananas yesterday. Huh? Yesterday? George only hibernated one night? Well, he'd just have to go back to bed and try harder. Oops. <laughs> well, it seemed like time to get the winter stuff out. Just happened a little faster than I intended. <laughs> Wait a minute. George forgot about the winter stuff. Skis. Sleds. His monkey mittens. No way did George want to sleep through winter and miss using all this fun stuff. Maybe someday, bears would wake up and see what they're missing. 